After months and months of waiting and after weeks of anticipation, the Chicago Bulls finally take the court today in the first preseason game against the Cleveland Cavaliers. What are some of the things I'm looking out for in this game? We're going to discuss that and more on today's episode of Chicago Bulls Central. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host, Terry Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this content for the day, y'all. And so when the Bulls take the court today against the Cleveland Cavaliers, there are a couple things that I'm looking for. And I'm not going to do my traditional, like during the season, I'll do a completely br- uh, different breakdown before games in regards to like what I'm looking for, uh, spots the, the, the Bulls can score on the floor, how can they take advantage of, the, of their opponent. But in preseason, it's a little bit different, right? I think both teams are kind of looking to solidify their rotations, looking to make making sure they make through preseason without a bunch of injuries. So not going to be my traditional way I would break down a game leading into a game, but I am going to talk about what are some of the things that I'm looking forward to the most in this game and things that I think as fans we should be looking out for. And the first thing is the thing we've heard the most about and the thing that we really kind of I think everybody understood was the direction we were going to go after the acquisition of Josh Giddey and Jalen Smith and moving players around, and that is a new offensive play style. Uh, you know, the Bulls have talked about playing more up-tempo so much, in fact, that uh, during the training camp period, uh, Billy Donovan had the team practicing with a 14-second shot clock so that they can really kind of simulate how fast they want to move. Billy Donovan talked about the team being the best conditioned team in the NBA and how they're going to need to be that to take advantage of the offensive play style that they're trying to play. But out it within that new play style, there are, of course, some things that we're looking for. First, the balance of on-ball, off-ball between Kobe White and Josh Giddy is one of the biggest things to look out for. Now, I don't know how much we're going to see that uh, it, you know, in, in this first preseason game. I don't know how much we're going to see the starters out there in the first preseason game. They could play you know, half of the, of the first quarter. They could play the entire first quarter. We could not see the, the majority of the game. It's a lot of different ways. Every team kind of operates their preseason differently as far as the minutes balance with their starters versus their bench unit. Um, and with this Bulls team having a lot of players as well trying to get on that roster, we'll talk about that in a second as well as far as what that looks like for this team. But I do think we're going to see a lot of the players actually play today, which is really good, right? Uh, Billy Donovan has already said that Josh Giddy is expected to play. Uh, Lonzo Ball is still up in the air when it comes down to that. But I do think we're probably going to see the Bulls starting five out there. now. Uh, you know, some people still question what that starting five is going to be. And the starting five now at the beginning of preseason doesn't mean it's going to be the same starting five when the season starts. So that's another thing. But that that dynamic between Kobe White and Josh Giddey, the beginnings of that, right? I'm, I'm really interested to see what does it look like in their time on the floor together and how that shakes out with, uh, with the on-ball, off-ball dynamic, as well as just overall Josh Giddey's playmaking, right? We haven't had a point guard. Uh, that can play make and, and create open shots for their for the teammates like Josh Giddy in a while. And so that's a really important thing. But overall, the quickness, pushing the pace, the movement off ball as well is something that I'm looking for, right? If you guys have been watching Chicago Bulls Central for a long time, you know one of the biggest things that I've been talking about with this offense for years is how how much we don't move off ball and without the ball. And how much that has made the offense tougher on the Chicago Bulls over the last few years. Now, we haven't had always the best off-ball players, and you know we still got some things that we need to work out off-ball as well with this team. But I think ultimately, like seeing that off-ball movement, seeing those off-ball actions, seeing how much we cut to the rim consistently, both with the starting lineup and, and off the bench, are really big parts of this team. And you know I've been you know, spending a lot of time uh, recently pointing out the difference between running gun and an up-tempo offense. The Bulls aren't trying to do running gun. They're trying to move up-tempo. But up-tempo, you can only do so much, right? You still need half-court actions. And for that, you need to move without the ball. That's how you can still run a faster offense is by keeping the movement going. So hearing Billy Donovan say things like they need to be the best conditioned team in the league and things like that because hopefully they're moving a lot. And with the motion in the offense, that's how you can create easy looks. That's how you can create easy lanes. That's how you can create those type of things. So overall, the system of the offense I'm looking for. Then individually, I'm looking for certain things offensively as well. Talked about the, the dynamic between Kobe White and Josh Giddy, but also Zach Levine. And he's probably going to he's not going to have as many isolation opportunities. As he, maybe he's had in the last five years 
with the Chicago Bulls. And that actually could make his game even more potent if he buys into that, which all signs are pointing to that. No, no, no issues there, right? And then, of course, Patrick Williams, is he more engaged offensively? How do we use Nikola Vucevic offensively with a more up-tempo offense and him being primarily kind of, he's not great in the up-tempo, right? But, you know, in half court, how do we, how do we use him and, and things like that? And so, of course, the bench dynamic, which I have that kind of break down into its own segment, so we'll talk about how I expect the bench. But that new play offensive play style, that's really the first thing that I'm looking for uh, in this team. And then to go with that offensive play style, the Bulls are also trying to adapt a new defensive play style. And that defensive play style is built around getting them the easier opportunities on the offensive side of the ball so that there's more synergy between the offense and the defense. Now, Billy Donovan has talked basically every time he's gotten in front of a microphone for the last month, he's talked about his concerns defensively for the Chicago Bulls team. Now, we do know that he turned over the defense, at least in training camp, to Wes Unsell Jr., so that's one thing that I'm looking for as well is what's Unsell Jr. calling the plays now that their game's going on or is what's Unsell more kind of the guy to establish the system, establish the, the, the mentalities, but Billy Donovan's still going to be the one calling that defense. So kind of watch that on the sideline, right? When we have timeouts, when we're on the defensive side of the ball, who's leading that huddle, then as, as well as when the Bulls are on defense, who's standing up on that sideline calling out what they're, what, what they're trying to do in the plays there. So that's a really uh, interesting dynamic to figure out as well. But overall, how well do the Bulls play defense on the perimeter, right? They are not shaped up right now on paper to be a great perimeter defending team. Now, again, you're only going to see so much of that because the rotations in this uh, game are going to be a little bit weird when you kind of look at around the league so far. Like, you've gone everything from some starters playing 30 minutes to some playing 9 and 10 minutes, right? So there's a big, uh, you know, uh, variance in that. And so where the Bulls sit in that, we'll ultimately see. But uh, overall, still looking at kind of the, the sensibilities defensively, right? What are we trying to do schematically with our defense and how we're trying to use that out on the perimeter? That's a really big thing I'm looking for in this game as well and over the preseason overall. The next one is the rotation, but not in the way that you think, right? I do think, per what I said, you're going to see some weird minute splits. You're going to see maybe some bitch players that we may not even see during the regular season play 25, 26, 28 minutes. Uh, and you may put, see some starters play 17, 15 minutes, something like that, right? So that plays a part into the, the rotation, but more so than, the, than just looking at the rotation in the traditional sense of who plays where, who plays with what. I think we're going to see a lot of weird kind of lineups out there while the Bulls are trying to figure out what's the best combination, who's going to make that roster. Um, but overall, how do the look, young guys look in their minutes? Regardless of who those minutes are out there with, Manus Musilis, Dalen Terry, Julian Phillips. How do these guys look in their minutes that they play out there in preseason? Uh, do uh, Julian and Dalen look like they've added something to their game? Do they look like the game has slowed down to them uh, more uh, from last season? Things like that. And Manus Busilis, as a rookie, what does he bring? Right? What is, is it more the energy? Has it refined some of his dribbling and handles? Right? Is he, is he going to be turnover, a foul prone, those type of things that we're looking for from a Manus Busilis? But overall, I really think that those things are really playing a big role uh, into it as well. And I think. Watching the young guys and how they perform in their minutes is a really big part of the rotation today because I think Billy Donovan's probably going to give them more minutes in the preseason than maybe what you can expect early in the season unless they completely clear out and earn and, and kill it in those roles. So really looking at the young guys here. And then, of course, the guys trying to make the roster for the Chicago Bulls. Earn a lot for Tim, uh, Taylor Horton Tucker, Kenny Lofton Jr., EJ Liddell, right? These are the guys that you're really kind of looking and seeing who stands out the most out of these guys. Who's the guy that shines, right? Who's the guys that, that looks like they fit into the, within the system, that they fit in with the other players that we know are going to be on this roster? How well do they perform? Now, make no mistake about it. There can be a lot of fool's gold in preseason, right? You can have players that put up big numbers in preseason by the nature of how much of your, your opponent's also playing some of their players. But I think seeing some of these guys and how, you know, Billy Donovan may favor them, right? And then even back into the guys like, uh, like a Chris Duarte, right, who – you know, he's trying to crack that rotation. We'll see if he can, but how does a Chris Duarte, Javon Carter, how do these guys look um, as they're trying to earn the roles? And I'm not trying to put Chris Duarte in the same tier as Javon Carter, but uh, Chris Duarte, I trust a lot more than the ball-headed hole Javon Carter, but, you know, that's just what it comes down to um, it, when, it, when, it, when it gets to it. But overall, like, this is a, a – we're it's basketball. And overall, I'm really excited about breaking down basketball, regardless of who's playing, who's not playing. It's just breaking down the game of basketball again to see what some of the things that the Bulls are trying to do. And so how does that how does that pay for it? Now, one of the things moving on from 
the preseason and what I'm excited about there, one of the things that you're starting to hear more and more comparisons about with the Chicago Bulls is this 2024-25 Bulls team with the 2019-20 Thunder team that was also coached by Billy Donovan. And it's an interesting parallel to make, right? It, going into that 2019-20 uh, season, um, the OKC Thunder had moved off of Paul George and Russell Westbrook. They had, they had Chris Paul there. They had Shea Gilgis Alexander there. They had uh, Denny Schroeder there. They had um, – uh, there's other players on that roster as well. Um, uh, that, that was, was – other players on that roster. Why am I throwing a blank on the other player on the roster that I wanted to, to mention? Nonetheless, oh, Danilo Gallinari. That's who else it was. So I think uh, had one of his best scoring seasons, scoring almost 19 points per game uh, that year as well for the, for the OKC Thunder. And keep in mind, that was a team that was many people looked at was going into a rebuild after moving off of Paul George, after moving off of Russell Westbrook, after winning 49 games and being the sixth seed. Um, you know, well, they won more games than that. They came into that season and they ended up winning 49 games and being the sixth seed. That team overachieved. And some people, especially the more optimistic Bulls fans, are wondering if that team can also be, if this Bulls team can be a team that can overachieve much like that team, right? That was a team that, hey, Chris, people thought Chris Paul was done. And Billy Donovan got the best out of Chris Paul when it came down to it. And, you know, it is what it is. He was coming off a down season with the Houston Rockets. Uh, he was 34 years old. And whereas that team had some older pieces, like in a Chris Paul, they had some young promising pieces as well, like a Shea Gilders Alexander that was at that point starting his ascent, right? And you look at Chris Paul that season, 70 games played, uh, where he averaged 17.6 points per game, five rebounds, 6.7 assists, and, and 1.6 steals. And he made the all-star team that year and was second all-NBA, and he finished seventh in MVP voting. Now, I'm not saying that the Bulls can have somebody that can finish like that. But when you look at this team, there's comparables. Like whether you want to make the comparison to Josh Giddy and Chris Paul, it's both being point guards that are going, that are trying to, that are both coming off down years. Josh Giddy's coming off a down year, especially how that season ended for him with the OKC Thunder. Or you can make the parallel between Chris Paul and Zach Levine, right? Zach Levine coming off a year where he wasn't really healthy. Zach Levine coming into a season where people are really down. Now, I don't think that Zach Levine is going to have a, a season where he finishes seventh in MVP voting. But there are some big parallels with this team and just how they had young players. They had an up-and-coming player. They had a veteran at that point. They were led in scoring by Shea Gilgis Alexander as well with 19 points. Denny Schroeder came off the bench and averaged 19 points uh, with that team as well and shot the ball 47% from the field, 39% uh, from three-point range, and 84% um, from, from uh, free throw range. The parallels are there as far as the expectation, right, and moving off of two big pieces that were important to your team. Now, I think the parallels would be kind of more there if you were making the comp if the Bulls moved on from Zach Levine, you're talking about the Bulls moving on from Zach and DeMar, but they still moved on from DeMar, Alex Caruso, Andre Drummond, very big parts of what the Chicago Bulls team has been, right? And so there are some similarities that you can make and parallels that you can make between the 2024-25 uh, Bulls team and the 2019-20 Thunder team. Of course, Billy Donovan is the biggest hook there being the guy who coached there. And when you look at it, like, as far as Josh Giddy being the playmaker to Chris Paul, you look at Kobe White, maybe you want to make that comparison as far as his ascension as being a dynamic now combo guard to Shea Gilgis Alexander. I'm not comparing them as players now, be clear there, more so the dynamic on the team. And then if you want to make the combination between Zach Levine and, like, a Denny Schroeder or, or Danilo Gallinari, Danilo Gallinari can compare to Manus Busilis, right? So, like, there are pieces on this team. And the thing that overarchingly more than anything is that this team, much like that OKC Thunder team, is not expected to do great coming into the season. And if the sum of the parts can, 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 do, can bring something special together and, and Billy Donovan can get this team overachieving much like that team did, of course, that's where it comes down to. Now, the thing is, uh, I mean, that team had Steven Adams still, I think, on it. Um, you know, this Bulls team. You know, it has Jalen Smith. It has Nikola Vucevic when it comes down to that. And the difference, the biggest difference when it comes down between that OKC Thunder team and this Chicago Bulls team is that that OKC Thunder team, even though they overachieved and made it to the playoffs that season, they had tons of draft picks that they had accumulated. This Bulls team does not have those tons of picks, and they do not have those future picks either. And so a, a season where the Bulls overachieve and maybe make the playoffs, could that be more detrimental to the Bulls' future if it is a flash in the pan 
and not a sustained amount of success. And that's what some of the Bulls fans that are more focused on the draft pick are going to ask yourselves. Like, that OKC Thunder team, yeah, they made the playoffs. They did. And you look at the number of picks that they had that they brought in from other teams, they had a bevy of future assets. They were still going to be able to add considerable young talent. The Bulls don't have that. The Bulls have their own first-round picks every year going out, except that San Antonio Spurs pick. And so while that Thunder team could overachieve and still have the future assets to move up if they wanted to, to pair some of those dozens of picks that they had at that point in time, this Bulls team does not do that. And so some Bulls fans are going to look at it and say, well, if this Bulls team does overachieve and they can't have a season like that OKC Thunder team where they win 40-plus games, the question is, if that's not sustainable and you don't do that going forward in subsequent seasons, you're not going to be able to add the influx of young talent that this team added. But one could also say that this team has Modest Busilla. This team has Kobe White. This team has Io DeSumo. This team has Zach Levine still under contract, which if Zach Levine does uh, mesh well with Josh Giddy, listen, it's there, right? And so those things are all there when it comes down to it, where the similarities are there as far as the, the, the view of the teams. The similarities are there as far as the coach. Similarities may even be there as far as some of the players that you're looking at and hoping being able to step up. But the future, that's the thing that's, that, that's undecided in all of this. And so, of course, in hindsight now, we know that that OKC Thunder team went on to trade Chris Paul. They went on to move on from Chris Paul. They went on to move on from Denny Schroeder. They, 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 and then they, over subsequent years, brought in tons of draft picks that, have, that developed for that team. That future isn't as clear for this Chicago Bulls team. And so, you know, could this team be the 2019-20 OKC Thunder? Maybe. That doesn't mean that that's going to make the future the same in the subsequent years for them either. And that's something that we just don't have a crystal ball to see either when it comes down to it. All we have is thoughts, guesses, and uh, we'll see. But I like a lot of these young pieces on this team. And I think overall, the biggest thing this season is to watch how these young guys develop. And yes, there are going to be questions of, are these young guys, some of these young guys, even going to crack the rotation? And I'll tell you this, if they don't crack the rotation, then that means that maybe they just don't have the talent. Now, of course, there's the chance that maybe Billy Donovan and his coaching staff just is undervaluing it or maybe not developing or putting them in the right situation. But there's also questions when it comes down to that overall. And if they can't earn a role now, when this team is going younger, when this team is going to play a play style that theoretically fits them more, if they can't earn a role now, what well, makes you say that they could ever? But we'll see how that goes for the Chicago Bulls, and we'll see how that goes over time as well for this team. I'm really excited about this season, uh, regardless of what it brings. I think it's the first time where there's a lot of uncertainty, right? While I have my thought that this Bulls team is not going to win a lot of basketball games, there's a chance that they can. And, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Now, before we go, I want to get into an article from Bleach Report. It listed the trade targets for each team heading into the 2024-25 season. And I know... Some people love trade talk. I hate trade speculation in a way, but number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls, I have to cover everything. I'm going to cover this as well. So they have three trade targets listed for the Chicago Bulls, and they're all guards. So let me go ahead and bury that lead. The Chicago uh, guards uh, uh, become even more of the Chicago guards. Now, uh, in the first one, they mentioned Austin Reeves as being a trade target for the Chicago Bulls, mentioning that if Zach Levine does go to the Los Angeles Lakers, which of course is something that, a team that his name has been linked to for years at this point, that they would have to or they should key in on Austin Reeves being one of those returning pieces, right? When you look at his uh, shooting, his playmaking, uh, how that could pair to Josh Giddy and Kobe White. Now, I think that with now Kobe White moving to the two, um, I don't think Austin Reeves can play the three like Zach Levine is probably going to play the three for the Chicago Bulls. But at the end of the day, the Bulls are probably looking for talent more than anything. And Austin Reeves being a target if the Bulls do end up doing a trade with the Los Angeles Lakers for Zach Levine, that definitely could be something if they're not dumping salaries off with things like that. The next player that they have mentioned, we've talked a lot about Austin Reeves. People know who Austin Reeves is, is both his flaws, but the Lakers definitely covet Austin Reeves and they value him high. That's why they haven't really made moves elsewhere, but we'll see. The next player that they have mentioned is Jordan Hawkins with the New Orleans Pelicans, but this is not in a trade for Zach Levine. This one, they're actually saying that with the Pelicans needing a center, that the Bulls could send Nikola Vucevic to the New Orleans Pelicans and then try to get Jordan Hawkins back. Now, Jordan Hawkins is an interesting case. 6'5", 185 pounds listed on ESPN. ESPN doesn't typically always list weights the best, so he may be a little bit more than that. This is a guy that shot 36% from three last year, averaged eight points per game, 
in his rookie season. He's going into his second year. He's a former lottery pick being taken in the 2023 draft at 14th overall. So this is, again, another guard that the Bulls are adding, but the Bulls are more so going it after, and they say this in this article, getting talent, going after the upside of the talent at every position instead of worrying about the position per se. Jordan Hawkins has some potential, but he's 22-year-old. He's older when it comes to second-year players, but again, still has a lot of development. We've seen it. People can de- Players can develop upwards until the 25-26. So he still has some development there. Would I be mad if the Bulls were to get Jordan Hawkins? I would have some questions, right? What do we then do in a big man depth? That's one of the questions that I would have. But Jordan Hawkins, if so, he's somebody that the Bulls could, and again, they're not saying it's a straight-up trade, right? None of these are straight-up trades. It's just saying that players that the Bulls should target if they move, if they make deals with these teams. Jordan Hawkins could be an interesting case for the Chicago Bulls. i like to see what else comes in the salary matching aspect of that. But again, uh, you know, we'll see what happens there. Next up, Jaden Ivey. Now, this is a guy that's been mentioned a lot around the Bulls the last couple of years. Um, I do think that the former Detroit Pistons regime did not necessarily think as highly on Jaden Ivey. I don't know what the new GM, I don't know what the new head coach and how they view him, but could be somebody. He's a former number five overall pick. And much like with Jordan Hawkins, you're at that point in looking at adding the upside of the talent more so than you're looking at the position per se. But then again, our deepest position, Ayo DeSumo, Kobe White, Josh Giddy. You still got Lonzo Ball, who's playing right this season. Uh, does Jaden Ivey, like, where does he fit in? He doesn't. But you're looking at the talent when it comes down to that and bringing in young talent and Jaden Ivey, who still does have a lot of upside. I want to be clear there. Could the Bulls target him if they do a deal with the Detroit Pistons built around Zach Levine? Could, they could be. But then again, the Pistons at this point, I think, are c- content with going and staying younger. Then again, they added Tobias Harris. They added uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. to this team. So you look at that. But Jaden Ivey, 6'4", uh, 22 years old, scored 16 points per game basically last season, I think. So, um, you know, that's another player that you can look at and say, hey, okay, what could he bring? Maybe some upside there for the Bulls. Um, but, hey, players to look out for uh, as we go forth into the season that could be on the Bulls' radar, could not be on the Bulls' radar. But let me know what you guys think is down below, as always. That's my time for today. For right now, you guys will be seeing me tonight for the pregame, halftime hangout, and postgame shows all live on the channel tonight. So make sure you guys stay in tune with us. You can follow us at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullscentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. That's thanks to you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See red if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. 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 Media.